Now, it turns out that we can actually solve systems of equations not just by looking at the picture and trying to guess and read off some kind of crazy graph or some kind of computer screen or calculator screen. We can actually use the power of algebra for us to allow us to actually identify the points algebraically. Let me show you what I mean. So here's an interesting system. I've got x squared plus y squared equals 100. I've got y minus uh, 10 equals negative 1 over 4x squared. And I want us to find out the solution to this system. So I want to find the x and y's that satisfy both at the same time. Can we identify these things? This looks like a circle centered at the origin, radius 10. What does this look like? I see the x is squared, but the y is not squared. This tells me that's a parabola. I see that it's an x squared parabola, so it's going to be a happy face or a sad face. Can you see which one it is? What do I look at? Do I look at this point? No, I look at this number. The coefficient in front of the x squared is negative. It's a sad face parabola. And so I see this is going to be a sad face parabola intersected with a circle. In fact, let's see what the solutions actually are. So how do we do this? Well, there are a lot of ways of proceeding. I'm going to use a method called substitution, which means I take one of the equations and solve for one of the quantities, and then take that identity and insert it into the other equation. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second equation. And there are lots of ways of doing this, by the way. There's not one method, lots of ways. So I'm going to take the second equation here, and I'm going to solve it for x squared. I see an x squared appearing here. So if I take this equation and solve for x squared, what do I see? So my first step is just to solve the second equation for x squared. I'm just multiplying both sides by negative 4, because that's going to undo the multiplication by negative 1 fourth here. So if I multiply both sides of the second equation by negative 4, what I see here is minus 4y, multiplying that by negative 4. When I multiply that by negative 4, I see plus 40. And that's going to equal x squared. OK. Now I see that the second equation is equivalent to this equation. x squared equals that. Well, notice that in the first equation, I have an x squared. So in fact, I can take this x squared. And I know it's the exact same thing as that x squared. And so I can replace this x squared by its twin, namely that. Now why would I want to do that? This only has one term. Now I have two terms. It seems like I'm making things worse. But notice that then there are no x's. Look, mom, no x. All I've got are y's. And then I can solve this for y. So that's the key idea. So if I take the second form of the second equation and replace the x squared by stuff that has y's in it, which equals the x squared, then I haven't changed anything. But now I've got this. So inserting this into here, I see, I'm going to write this out, negative 4y plus 40 plus y squared equals 100. Now let's just see that this is exactly what I advertised. Notice that this here is the same thing as this, which is x squared. So this is really x squared plus y squared equals 100. That's exactly what this says. Okay. So this is a substitution method for solving. Now I've just got y squareds running around. So let's see if we can sort of write this out nice and neatly. What do I see? Well, I see y squared. And then I see I've got a minus 4y. And then I see a 40. Now it's a quadratic. So let me bring the 100 over to this side by subtracting 100 from both sides. So I get a 0 on this side. And then I see a negative 100 here. So I have. Uh, 40 minus 100, which is minus 60, equals 0. Well, I've got a quadratic. Oh, I hope it can be factored. Oh, please factor. Y, Y. This negative sign tells me that the product of these two numbers uh, have to be negative, which means that they must have opposite signs. So I must have a plus or a minus somewhere. I've got to think of two numbers that multiply to give me 60, but when I subtract them, I get actually negative 4. There are lots of things to try here. 60. Well, 60 is 6 times 10. And if I take 10 and subtract 6, I get 4. I want minus 4, so I guess I should take negative 10 and add 6. And I think I've done it. Now again. I've been doing this for 400 billion years. So I can do it right at the starting block. 
you've been only doing it for maybe, I don't know, three years. So it might take you a little bit longer. This is the key point to stop, relax, and try lots of experimentation, fail around, keep trying with the factoring until you hit it, okay? But let's see this works. Y times Y is Y squared. My outside terms are negative 10Y. Inside terms are plus 6Y. When I add negative 10 plus 6, I get negative 4. And then the last times the last is 60. I actually hit it on the head. It was lucky. So therefore, there's two possibilities. Either Y plus 6 equals 0, or Y minus 10 equals 0. If Y plus 6 equals 0, that means that Y equals negative 6. That's one solution. And if this equals 0, I see that y has to equal 10, because 10 minus 10 is 0. So I have two solutions. We're done. Let's finish and have a big parade. Well, no. That was just the y's. But we have to find both the x and the y. So these are actually ordered pairs for solutions. So I found the y values. Now I've got to find the x values. So the work does not quite end. All right. So let's take a look at y equals 10. <clears throat> If y equals 10, how can I figure out what x equals? Well, I can go back to any of the equations that we have to figure out the x value. In particular, let me go back to this red one. And let's let y equal 10. So now I'm going to go off and do a little bit more work and figure out the x value associated with this. So if I plug in 10 for the y, I see negative 4 times 10. That's going to be negative 40 plus 40 equals x squared. And so now I can solve for, for x. Well, that's actually 0 equals x squared. And there's only one number when you square it gives 0. That's x equals 0. So now I see that x equals 0 goes along with this. So the y partner here is x equals 0. And I found my very first solution, which is 0 comma 10. Remember, we always write the x first, so 0 comma 10. All right, now what about this solution? What's the x value here? Might be a little surprise. Let's see if I can surprise you. So let's put in a negative 6 for y in this and solve for x. So when I plug in a negative 6 for y, I see negative 6 times negative 4. That's a positive, positive 24. So I have 24 plus 40 equals x squared. I'm inserting that right into here. In place of y, I'm putting the negative 6. And everything else carries through. And so this is 64 equals x squared. Therefore, x equals 8. No. I see a quadratic. There's going to be two answers. And so I see that, in fact, x equals plus or minus the square root of 64, or plus or minus 8. That's right. There are two x values for this y value. That means that we actually have two possible solutions. x equals negative 8. x equals 8. So to summarize, what are all the solutions to this monster system? turns out that there are three solutions. That's sort of weird. There are three solutions. One solution is this one we found here, 0, 10. That means x equals 0 and y equals 10. And then we've got two more solutions. The first one is x equals negative 8 and y equals negative 6. And the other solution is that x equals 8, while y still equals negative 6. So we seem to have three solutions. And that's the answer. Phew. Now, is, are they correct? Are these solutions really solutions? Well, one way to check your answer is to look at a graph. We've already said that's a circle centered at the origin, radius 10. This is a sad face parabola moving down. If we actually graph them, this is the graph. And now we can see visually what all the algebra showed us. There's the parabola. There's the circle, radius 10. And what about the points of intersection? Well, there are these points here. And where is that? That seems to be at negative 6, comma, negative 8. I'm sorry, a negative 8, comma, negative 6. So there's the negative 8, comma, negative 6. Then we've got this one, which is 8, comma, negative 6. That was the other one. And this tip top, where they just touch each other perfectly, that's at 0, comma, 10. So you can see the three solutions that correspond with this. This is the visualization, in some sense, of all the algebraic work that we did to carefully solve this system by substitution. A little bit of work and a lot of care is required to really get this down correctly. But you can see how we're pulling all the lessons that we've had in this course and other courses together to get to this point to find those three solutions.
Nice.